What is up, Rap Potential YouTube, and welcome to today's video. We are getting started on an epic project for the next few weeks for Rap Potential, not for something else. So, let me get some stuff moved out of the way. There's always a good video on the Rap Potential channel when we get to hear the mouse, aka the best sounding vehicle that I own, fire up. So, Full Bridgeport 12A. Got to move this thing out of the shop so that we can move the next car into the shop. This is the Weber car. You'll see a video on the final jetting for this coming soon. And I appreciate the love on all the videos up till now. So now that we got the perfectly good and running car out of the way, today's goal right now is uh, I'm going to clean the shop, which is going to take me a lot longer than what you guys see it takes. Then we're going to move this car into the shop. Then I'm going to strip all of the suspension, every single nut and bolt pretty much off the bottom of this car, drop the fuel lines, pull the harness out. We're going to strip this thing down to a bare shell, pull the doors off, the whole deal, and uh, get ready for like... A pretty much complete restoration my other goal for today which is where we will pick back up after the uh, the time lapses of tear down the time lapses of destruction um, is we're going to be building a mount for the front and rear of this car such that I can put it on a rotisserie if you've never seen what a like car rotisserie is I don't have the uh, space nor money nor whatever to actually buy one nor am I actually going to use one really more than once so I'm going to build a bracket that bolts to the front of this car and to the back of this car, get some 4x4s and some stuff from Home Depot, and I'm going to build a triangular, you know, kind of like a triangle stand thing for a dirt bike or for a race car to hold this car up in the air such that I can rotate it on its side, and then I can finish and refinish the bottom of the car. So let's, uh, let's get this thing in the garage, and let's get uh, everything tore off of it probably gonna take me most of the rest of the day but that's okay we're gonna get this car moved in here my buddy dom from school is here he's gonna help me steer it i'm gonna have to go retrieve the tractor from down there it's probably only gonna make it to about here because it won't make it up that hill and definitely we are not strong enough to push it in there so nor is it worth our time to try right might as well we have a tractor might as well yeah. use the tractor yeah, probably so we're going to let that thing roll down here, get the tractor, he can steer it, push it in. So let's do that.
All right, guys. Well, we uh, I pressure washed the RX-7, the rally car, and it looks super fire. I also pressure washed the inside. As you can see, we have a um, large wasp coming off of the car from somewhere. So I guess it'll be fun to figure out. Crunch. All right, so we pressure washed the car. It's clean. I also pressure wash the inside a little bit, the back. Pressure wash this side, that side. Open the doors, pressure wash the inside the doors, the floors, the whole deal. We pressure wash the whole deal. And y'all might be like, why'd you pressure wash it all in the car? It just makes a mess of the inside of the car. You are correct. However, it's very hard for one person to hold a back glass and clean it. It's also very hard for one person to hold a door and clean it. So the best fixture is the car. So I just pressure wash it all in here. You know, didn't like directly spray the dash and the wiring and all that jazz. I still got to clean the floors out yet, but um, all the major hard to get areas of the cage and everything are all clean. Um, the engine bay, which I had freshly repainted in the last video with this car, is pressure washed, but it's not super clean. So it's all going to get scuffed and resprayed and we'll make it look pretty pretty again. Um, but I am pretty sure I'm probably going to drop the front subframe out of this and get get the bottom of it painted as well. Pull all the fuel lines and stuff out of it because I want to redo the bottom of this car as well. So, you know, the intent is not so much to restore it such that it's perfect, but if I'm going to go ahead and paint it, we're going to go ahead and do like it, what I would call like a, a race car nut and bolt restoration or fixings, right? So I'm going to take every nut and bolt off the car that's important we're going to clean them, inspect them, reinstall them, and the car will be pretty much ready to rip to go racing. Now, cosmetically, is it going to be perfect? No. But it will have fresh paint on every surface, and it'll look nice. Now, the ma main reason that I say is, like, it's a race car. Look at that rocker panel. I'm not going to pull that back out. The door opens and closes fine. Once that's repainted white, it's good to go, right? Same thing up here. For those of you who didn't know, this car has been on its lid once, i.e. flipped upside down because it's a GSLSE without a sunroof now. It's also had a whole front clip put back on it from the strut towers forward. So you can see, you know, it's a little banged up here, got restitched, re-put back on. This side I had to fix, there was a rust hole here, so I got all new sheet metal put in it. Notice too, there's a lot less holes in this engine bay because I went through and shaved all of them off. We will be building a whole new exhaust system for this car, and I'm going to rewire and pull all the wiring out, clean it, inspect it, rewrap it, make it look super pretty, and it should be good to go. We also fixed the, uh, if you go back to the other video, I clipped out where a tree branch fell, smashed this up, and then this is where, you know, rear wheel drive caught a hold of something and busted it up. So, it's a race car, but the goal is tribute to the Millen car. And it's going to be set up more for like tarmac rally and road course racing. I think that's would be. I think that would be a better, a uh, a better, like mark a more marketable setup for this car than as a specific dirt rally car, right? So it'll be all nice, all pretty, ready to take to the track, ready to be clean, or will be clean, ready to be taken meticulous care of because that's what RX7 owners do, right, guys? We take meticulous care of our race cars. So, I'm going to go ahead, y'all are going to hop back into a time lapse, and I'm going to strip all the stuff off this car, and I'm going to make a big mess slash pile of parts to lay up over here, such that I can start getting this thing up and built onto some sort of rotisserie so I don't have to clean and paint the bottom of the car, laying on my back on a concrete floor in the fall.
All right, my dudes. Well, it's uh, the end of the night, and uh, let me tell you one tip, tip of the trick. If you go to the grocery store on the way home, just this just clicked into my head. Um, I left all my groceries in the Jeep, so there was some frozen stuff. So hopefully uh, it's definitely thawed. So don't leave your groceries in your car when you decide to uh, get home and go straight to working on this car. So anyways, update. As you can see, we have uh, torn down a substantial amount of stuff. So the uh, main body harness is still kind of up in here for right now. That's going to come out next. I'm not going to take the steering column out um, just because it's kind of a pain. And this like adapter quick release thing prevents me from getting all of this really apart. The multi-combination switch can't come off because this is too big for what it slid over. Kind of a flaw of whoever uh, installed that, but it is what it is. I'm not going to put a whole new column shaft in it. Um, this harness is just about able to come out. A couple connectors in there. I'll slide the front half of that out. The chassis harness. Um, the dash all came out. One thing, so, um, to be straight up, I've never taken apart a Series 3, like, dash and stuff. Now, I've removed the dash out of a car that the dash was, like, already out of, but I've never, like, actually taken one out. That's mostly put together and this one's pretty much all there for a race car but I didn't realize until you know a good way you flip this over until a good way through my battle with this dash that uh, there's these two giant plugs right here and you can just unplug these two giant plugs and basically you're like heater harness and everything that lays up under here and goes all through up here for your radio and stuff and all your gauge, all your gauge cluster stuff stays with the car, but your switches and stuff up here, all that can stay on the dash. And you can leave all the switches in place and everything up there, and it'll all come out as one unit. Um, I didn't know that. I'm used to like an SA, which I've had the dash out of my car twice. And on that car, you just have to disconnect everything, and it all comes off. And then the harness stays in there, and then you can do it because. This car has electrically controlled like temperature and all that magic. On a first gen, on a first, first gen, on an SA, it's all controlled by levers that move cables that move actual valves and things and stuff. So it's a real pain. But this one's not that bad once I figured out how it actually works. So here's kind of the the general gist of what's in here. And some of you've probably seen this stuff before. But heater box in the center. The top diverter goes through the the uh, dash valves right above the uh, the the main control there. There's your actual fan blower over there to the right. Notice it's not connected from there to there, so I'm gonna have to get a tube and connect that. That doesn't have the AC condenser because we won't have the AC stuff in here. But we do want to retain heat in this car. Um, I am going to retain a lot of this factory wiring, but I will simplify it. So if there is plugs and stuff that aren't needed, we'll most likely. Um, either remove them or get them tucked up nicely such that they aren't dangly and doing this kind of stuff on your legs while you're racing. So we'll try to get all of that nonsense sorted out, which will be good. But uh, everything's looking fresh, looking pretty, pretty nice in here. So I am curious, um, this cage doesn't have a, a dash bar. That goes across. I'm gonna assume that that's probably something that we will need. If I had to bet, um, and I don't know why this one doesn't have it, and I don't know why it doesn't have it, and yet pass tech, but maybe it's not required. But I would would have thought that that would have been required. Ow! Man, I got some like metal shavings in my fingers. I'm not all about it. Let that all oh, that goes into there to suck air in. Same thing on that side, the uh, the vents. So on a GSLC, the quarter corner vents, you can flip a switch open and it sucks fresh air from the outside. This looks like the uh, the hole where those come in right there and there. But yeah, 
I'm really unsure why this doesn't have a dash bar. That might be something we're going to have to add. And then that's really going to mess up the whole, uh, this whole dash setup here. Um, I'll have to do some research on that. Because it might be a real pain to get that through there and then retain all the heat and such. Um, so, we'll see. But, for now, God dang it, metal splinter. For now, I'm going to let you guys go on that. We're going to end the video there with this thing kind of stripped to where it is. Um, the next video, which I'm going I'm to start on it tomorrow and it's going to carry through a few days. Um, but I'm going to get this thing up in the air, get the suspension off of it, get the rest of the interior stuff situated and cleaned up. And then uh, get this thing flipped so we can really start cleaning and, and painting and making everything look nice. So that's kind of the intent here. Um, like I said, I don't want this thing to be you know, a perfect show car, but... Not all show cars are race cars, but all race cars are show cars. So we'd like to get it looking super presentable, super nice, ready for the next guy to come in here and, and work on it and everything to be ready to go. And he'll, the next owner will be able to reference the YouTube videos, the YouTube builds for basically how the whole car is put together. It'll be like buying a, a custom built, bad, awesome race car that actually comes with an instruction manual on how it's built. So, with that, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Keep it red.